If you decide to go with an LS, we've shown you lots of options in the past. Pull one out of the boneyard, buy a factory crate engine, or today's option, build one from scratch out of a catalog. Plus, a behind-the-scenes look at ARP fasteners. Listen up, LS fans. Today on Engine Power, we're starting the buildup of our very first 408 cubic inch LS stroker that's going to make 1,000 horsepower. Now, we're going to show you the tips and tricks to making big horsepower and extending the life of the engine in a three show build. Now, the foundation for this project is a fully machined six liter iron block, and every single part used came mail order from this catalog. When GM came out with the LQ4 engine, they used iron heads for the first two years which were 1999 and 2000. Then they went over to an aluminum head. Now all LQ4 engines had a 9.4 to 1 compression ratio using a dish piston. By now they're all over the scrap yards too and pretty inexpensive for such a strong block. Also popular is the LS1 from 1997, a 5.7 liter for Corvettes. The LS2 from 2005 is a 6 liter for Corvettes and GTOs. The LS3 of 2008, again for Corvettes, and later the Camaro. And there were plenty of LSs in between. Now the parts list for this build we came up with off of some of the other engines we built that we've had some good numbers on, as well as some of the latest and greatest heads that TrickFlow offers. Now the goal for this thing is very simple. 550 horsepower naturally aspirated on pump gas. Now it's a stroker, so we want a broad torque band. We want from start to finish to almost be a straight line on the dyno graph. Now we also are going to put the wood to this thing later with a big turbo going for a thousand horsepower. And one of you lucky viewers is going to get a chance to win it by heading over to PowerNationTV.com and signing up. Part one of this build will cover the entire short block, starting off with some inexpensive tricks to the block that will help extend its life along with the parts that go in it, like this forged K1 rotating assembly, a milling high volume oil pump, trick flow camshaft and lifters, plus a Holly oil pan and oil control baffle. This iron 6 liter block is the perfect foundation for this build. It's been seasoned and has a finished bore of 4030 inches. Now the block is factory prepped with 6 bolt main caps. It comes with the cam bearings and freeze plugs installed and can accept up to a 4 inch stroke with no clearancing. Now the big eye opener to this project is the fact that Summit Racing rates this block at 1400 horsepower. That means all power adders are welcome, especially that turbo we got coming. Now to get started, we really don't need a lot. Just a die grinder, some cartridge rolls, some metric taps, remember this thing's metric now, and a countersink. Deburring a block is really simple. We've shown it to you many times on several different engines. All we're really doing here is removing any sharp edges so that they're all smooth. Now this helps make the block a little bit stronger by removing any stress risers. Doing the same thing in the lifter valley will also help oil drain back to the pan just a little faster. Now this is cheap insurance that will extend the life of an engine. And to maximize the effect, smooth it some more with a cartridge roll. Another thing we like to do is run a tap through all the bolt holes. This will make sure they are all cleaned out from the shot painting process. This is something we highly recommend. Plus, it will ensure we get a good clamping force when we tighten the bolts later. Due to the horsepower we're going to make with our turbo, we can't rely on the factory main bolts to handle the extra stress. And you just can't swap out the bolts for studs because it changes the line hone, and we can prove it. With the factory bolts torqued to spec, we can install the gauge and verify zero. Now we we'll remove the bolts and replace them with ARP studs, and then torque them to ARP specs. With the same gauge setting, we'll get another reading, One, two, close to a thousandth smaller. This is due to the extra clamping force of the studs. Now what that can do is actually cause the clearance between the crankshaft journal and the bearing to tighten up. And on a tight tolerance engine like this, that can absolutely cause a failure or a spun bearing. So the fix to that is going to be to take your block and 100 bucks to your local machine shop. Have them line home that half a thousandths back out for you. And that's what I'm going to take care of so when we get back, we can finish up. Oh my goodness. 
Ooh, there we go. Well, we're back from the machine shop and touching up the line hone. Now, I only had to make a couple swipes and it came out fine, but just to be sure, I went ahead and put in the main bearings to check the clearances against the crankshaft after putting in those ARP studs. Now, anybody who's built one of these LSs with these six bolt main caps knows they're a bear to get on and off, especially when you install studs. Now, there are some specialty tools out there for getting these main caps off, but let me tell you, they are expensive. So I've got a cheap and easy trick I want to show you that I use. Helps get these things on and off easy. We'll save you a boatload of cash. And all we're going to use is a punch, a drill bit for a quarter 20 tap, and a slide hammer of some sort. The punch is to keep the bit from walking. Then we can drill a hole into the main cap, but just deep enough to cut a few threads. Now using some WD-40 as lube, tap the hole, making sure to keep it straight and using some compressed air, blow the shavings out of the hole. Then run in your quarter 20 bolt and attach your slide hammer to the bolt and pull it out. And it can be that easy. When John finishes up those main caps, I'm gonna take care of an important oiling modification to the inlet and outlet ports on the block and the oil pan. Now it's a simple process that will improve oil flow. These ports have a hard, sharp edge. They need to have a radius so the oil has a smoother path to get through. Using the countersink bit, we'll knock that edge off and give it a uniform shape. Make sure you keep the bit straight so the radius is even. Now we can move over to the oil pan. Now the oil galleys that run down to the oil filter need some attention. See the rough edges in the hard transition the oil has to go through? That's a restriction and has to go. So, using a cartridge roll, we'll remove that material. Use light pressure and be cautious not to remove too much, because if you do, you'll go right through the casting. That smooth path will help extend engine life, lessen bearing wear, and help the system oil the turbo when we add it. Exactly what this 408 needs. Since the oil pump is the heart of the engine, we want it to perform better than new. Now to make sure of that, We'll get rid of these edges so the oil flows faster and has an easier path. When using a grinder like this, don't apply a lot of pressure or RPM. Let the cartridge roll do the work. You just guide it. Now as you work away the edges, remember to make a smooth radius to promote flow. Now before we get this block in the washer for a much needed bath, there's one more area I want to go over, and that's at the bottom of the cylinder wall to take care of this skirt. Because when the piston is at bottom dead center or at the bottom of the stroke, when it starts to come back up, it rocks. Now this can score the skirts pretty bad, especially at high RPM. So by simply deburring the bottom of the cylinder walls will help eliminate the wear on the piston skirts. The only downside is we have seven more holes to go before we address the other half of this equation. Sharp edges on the bottom of a piston skirt will scrape oil off the cylinder walls as it moves down the bore. So we're gonna use an oil impregnated file that we got from the late Joe Mondello to remove it, which will keep oil on the walls and allow better lubrication to the skirts. We're done with the grinders and it's off for its final wash. Did you ever wonder how ARP gives their fasteners such race-worthy strength? Join us for a behind the scenes tour of their facilities and see for yourselves. Stay with us. We're back and almost ready for assembly on our 408 stroker. Now, whether you're building a daily driver or an all-out race engine, the first part on your parts list should be an ARP fastener upgrade, and here's why. It's a simple fact. When performance parts win at the track, they find their way to the shops of gearheads. Case in point, ARP fasteners. In the late 1960s, Gary Holtzfeld set out to make stronger, more reliable studs and bolts for race engines. Since then, automotive racing products has grown from its garage to a world famous company. Gary's son Mike is now in charge of ARP operations, where all they do is make precision extreme street fasteners, an intricate painstaking process all in-house at their California complex. Here's where it all starts with miles of 8740 chromoly coils. After the coils are straightened, ARP's progressive forging starts with cold heading. And it takes the raw coil and it actually does through a series of cutting, 
upsets and forming, it actually makes the head onto the bolt. For studs and larger size bolts, 12 foot bar stock is cut to lengths and sent to a hothead station like this. Today, veteran employee Danny Barrera is forming heads on Honda balancer bolts. His electrical induction heater will cheat the part to 1850 degrees in 15 seconds. I would then place it as lower die and I would hit the press and it would come down and form the part. Heat treating is perhaps the most critical precisely controlled process at ARP. Temperatures can reach 1800 degrees for quenching and tempering. Aging takes up to 16 hours, all in vertical racks that hold each piece individually for complete penetration. Shot painting removes all surface irregularities like stress risers while improving overall exterior integrity. Quite a difference already. Next stop, a facility where ARP chrome molly fasteners undergo some especially critical manufacturing steps, like centerless grinding. This ensures bolts and studs are perfectly concentric. We gave it a straight grind, an undercut grind, and now we're doing the TD grind. Most ARP bolts are fillet rolled with a 30 degree chamfer between the head and the shank. Filler roll dies come in and pressurize underneath the head, which strengthens it. It uh, really squeezes the microstructure of the, of the material and gives it a lot of fatigue strength. Fillet rolling further compresses the grain flow. This adds more strength where it really counts. Cutting threads weakens the part. ARP rolls their threads, which also adds fatigue strength. While ARP has a dedicated quality control department overseeing accuracy of tools, procedures, and product, we discovered that workers on the floor frequently inspect and measure fasteners as part of ongoing quality control and company pride. A lot of those guys uh, have been with us for many years. I mean, they started out uh, fairly young with us and stuck with us. ARP manufactures nuts in a multi-step process that begins with blanking each hex and 12-point nut. Then sophisticated automated threading equipment taps each one with an accuracy of one thousandths of an inch. Tight, right? Pete is a veteran machinist who not only helped refine the nut making process, he also mentors younger, newer employees. I'm happy to work with this kid. I, I'm happy to say, say I, I'm able to, to show what I know. In surface prep, steel parts like these nuts are placed in tumblers full of one of five different media from various ceramic particles down to walnut shells and corn husk. The results, a micro-polished, flawless finish. Most studs and many bolts go through a multi-stage finishing process and application of a black oxide permanent finish. So are they totally finished? At the end of the day, all the rolling and filler rolling and grinding and forging just goes right to that room and that's where it's all put to the test. In fact, random samples from every production run go through destructive testing. They fatigue test fasteners to elevated loads that are 10% above aerospace requirements, usually to one million cycles. Tensile testing is simply pulling on a fastener until it breaks. That's an OEM stud on the left, and the ARP has a tensile strength of over 190,000 PSI, so it'll be a while before it lets go. Finally, this is where more than 1,000 different engine kits are shipped to race teams and builders around the world. It wasn't always that way. Those are all hard fought for customers. <laughs> so building a better bolt, if you will, is an enormous endeavor. That's what it takes to keep the most powerful engines together and winning. When you find work that you enjoy doing it, you, you do it as best you can. We've always liked being better than the other guys. Hey, we're back. The masking job is finished and we're ready to add a little color to the block. Now the reason for that is our washer gets a little aggressive. Now this is the last step before all that assembly. We'll spray a few coats of Duplicolor's high heat gray engine primer so the paint has a good base to stick to. Now apply some even coats of their semi-gloss black engine enamel with ceramic. It's rated to 500 degrees. Time to clear that parts table. Starting with our trick flow camshaft. The valve lift on the intake and exhaust with a 1.7 rocker is 625. Duration at 50 is 230 on the intake, 238 on the exhaust. 
Now once it's in, we can rotate it to make sure it spins free and there is no binding. The cam retaining plate can go on now, followed by the timing sprocket. Now loosely drape the chain over the gear and secure it with a zip tie. That will allow us to check the clearance between the timing set and the new front cover. Now with it against the block without a gasket, it sits flush but the holes do not line up. This boss is coming into contact with the side of the chain, so it's got to go. Using an aluminum burr, remove the unwanted material and clean it up with a cartridge roll. Back at the block, we can see there is plenty of room for the chain now and the holes line up. The rotating assembly was supplied with King bearings. Now they're 24% harder than a typical race bearing for more fatigue resistance. Now these are three quarter grooved for improved oiling to the journals. Even though we prime every one of our engines before fire up, assembly lube is a must to protect the bearings and journals when the engine is being put together. We're ready for another part off the table. It's this K1 crankshaft that sports a four inch stroke and two 100 mains. Now it's a 4340 forged material and weighs in at 52 pounds. You can order it with a 24 or 58 tooth reluctor wheel. Now it's a strong, affordable foundation for our plans. Earlier, we showed you why we put these ARP studs in. It's also important you know that the torque sequence is very critical. Here's why. When you tighten the main cap down, you want to do it in small, even increments so it seats flat. If you torque one side to the final spec before the others, you risk side loading the bearing and altering its crush height. First to be torqued are the inner studs to 20 foot pounds, followed by an increase to 40. Finally, to the final spec of 60 foot pounds. For the outers, the same process, but the final torque value is 50 foot pounds. The side main cap bolts need a little silicone under the head of the bolt to prevent oil seepage. They get torqued in one pass to 20 foot pounds. Whether it's ARP bolts or other parts you spend your money on, if they're not installed correctly, you could be asking for problems. Now today we showed you how to improve the oiling system and strengthen an LS engine block. Now these are all things you can do at home to save money for more parts. Now speaking of parts, we have plenty left on the table that you'll see installed next time when we get this thing ready for the dyno. If you're the proud owner of a big cubic inch, big cam performance engine, TrickFlow has the carburetor you need for fuel delivery. This is their Track Heat Pro carburetor that sports 850 CFM. Now it's got a square bore 4150 base with mechanical secondaries and absolutely no choke. Now this thing uses a high flow main body, billet metering blocks, and a billet throttle base plate. Now with the silver and black finish, this thing is pretty easy on the eyes, and at 675 bucks, it's really easy on your wallet. Say goodbye to annoying exhaust leaks with these Mr. Gasket aluminum header gaskets. Now these things are multi-layered and are reusable for the life of the engine. Plus, they're slotted on the outside holes for ease of installation. You can pick yours up for around 30 bucks. Patriot Performance Exhaust recently introduced an affordable set of long tube headers for GM's most popular muscle cars. Now these things fit everything from Camaros, Monte Carlos, Chevelles, and several, several others. Now they come with a 5 16 inch laser cut flange for a warp free seal, 18 gauge inch and 5 h primaries, and a 3 inch collector. Now these things are made to fit most angle plug cylinder heads and come with all the odds and ends you need for the installation. Now you can order these things bare or with the ceramic coating like this. Prices start at $184. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time.